Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ulama of Islam and from some of the great scholars in this time we have Shaykhana Shaykh al-Allam al-Muhaddith Abdul Masin ibn Hamid al-Abbad al-Badr Hafadhullah ta'ala one of our mashayikh in Medina to Nabawiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who teaches in the haram and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the shaykh and I just wanted to read a couple of benefits from the hadith of Abdurrahman ibn Abdullah al-Mas'ud which is pertinent to how we how we end up in this life you know how we how we die how we spend our time in this life and what deeds did we die upon did we die upon did we live and die upon good or ask yourself you know what what are you doing daily are you uh, doing evil things and possibly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could take your life in that state and may Allah bless us all with a righteous ending عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه قال حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم هو صادق المصدوق إن أهدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمن بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقين أو سعيد فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أحدكم ليعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أحدكم ليعمل بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها رواه بخاري ومسلم In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم <clears throat> Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam uh, said and that he wa, he is uh huwa sadiq al masduq and Shaykh uh, uh, Abdul Masin hafizahullah ta'ala says that the meaning of sadiq fi qawlihi musaddiq fi ma ja'a bihi min al wahi he says that Sadiq here, the truthful, this refers to uh, uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, referred to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the truthful one, meaning that what he came with from from uh, revelation is to be believed because he it was uh, truthful. And this is the statement of uh, Ibn Mas'ud and that this hadith it contains many issues with regards to the ghaib or the unseen things that we we only know through uh, revelation and ibn uh, uh, abdurrahman <coughs> Abdur, uh, abdurrahman abdullah bin mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu here was uh, affirming the fact that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is trustworthy and trustworthy in delivering this uh this information about the unseen world so in it the prophet uh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that verily one of you is gathered together in the uh stomach of his mother 40 days as uh, a fluid then as a piece of uh, blood clot then as a piece a morsel morsel of flesh then an angel is sent to uh sent to 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 blow the soul into the uh soul into you and the angel is commanded with four things and it writes the uh, what the person will earn, their lifespan, their deeds, whether they will be happy or sad. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, For wallahi, he swore by Allah, Alladhi la ilaha ghayru, 
he he said and by Allah who there is no god other than him no god uh, worthy of worship other than him verily one of you will do the deeds of the people of paradise until what was until what is between him and paradise is an arm span length then what was written will overtake him and he will do the deeds of the fire and enter it and verily one of you will do the deeds of the people of the hellfire until what is between him and between the hellfire is just an arm span length then what was written will overcome him and he will do the deeds of the people of paradise and enter it and this is collect this hadith was uh, collected in bukhari and muslim in this hadith is many many benefits and it is a warning for us about how we live our life and how our life uh be in, how our life uh, could possibly end and that we want to continually to do good so in hope that we uh the last deeds that we do are based on uh good deeds some of the benefits Sheikh Abdul Masin uh half of the law ta'ala mentioned he said that this hadith one of the things that we benefit from this hadith is that it illustrates for us the creation of humanity in the stomachs of their mother you know the creation of a person in the stomach of its mother uh, another benefit of this hadith is that the uh the angel blows in the the spirit or the soul into a person after 120 days and so at that period is when a person when uh it becomes a that creation becomes a person and is considered a person in the Sharia. The third benefit that we gain from this hadith that the Sheikh mentions is that the angels, that from the angels there are those that uh, that blow the spirits into the wombs uh, of 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 the mothers in order to uh, to to give the life to the uh, to the newborns newborn babies. Another benefit that the Sheikh uh, brought about or, or mentioned regarding this hadith, he said that this hadith also um, illustrates for us the Iman bil Ghaib, you know, the belief in the unseen. Because these are things we don't see. These are things that we only know about through Wahi, through revelation, and through the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, which is another type of revelation. Another benefit the Sheikh mentioned with regards to this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us the faith in the Qadr, in the divine destiny, and that it divine destiny uh, precedes everything in in creation. It was preceded, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has knowledge and created everything uh, before it was even created. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had knowledge that it would exist, and He Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who created and is as is full of aware uh, aware over all of his creation and omni omnipotent over his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala and another benefit from this hadith is it shows us that our deeds are in accordance with how we die meaning that some people they live in the evil life but then maybe at the very last part of their their, their very last few minutes of their existence in this life that they make repentance to their lord and they're forgiven of all their sins and they will enter the par the, the paradise and then some people as illustrated in the hadith will do righteousness and we believe that they are righteous people but maybe on their deathbed they uh disbelieve in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commit shirk or kufr or deny the existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and end up being held accountable and dying upon disbelief and being in the uh the, being from the people of the hellfire another benefit of this hadith the sheikh mentions he said this hadith also it also illustrates for us the importance of having fear and hope fear of of the hellfire and the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hope for the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't know how we're going to end and that we should have fear of having a, a a wicked or evil ending 
and that we should have hope that we will be forgiven and that we will have a righteous ending. Those are just some of the uh, benefits the Sheikh mentioned with regards to this very, very important hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to be of those people who have a righteous ending. And may Allah protect us from having an evil ending. And may Allah forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And anything that I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallallahu wa sallam. Sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya.